Hey guys, welcome back to another Tech Tech Prepare video. Uh, in today's episode, we're going to be working on this 16 inch MacBook Pro. Uh, this is a 2019 uh, in space gray model A2141. Uh, this is the last Intel models. Uh, this one actually is a Core i9, the fastest Intel processor you could get. Uh, but yeah, this one came in uh, for a LCD replacement. Uh, if you guys are looking for these LCDs or any other parts or tools you see in today's video, we have them available at our website techdep.com or linked in the description below. Uh, but let's go ahead and get into today's repair. Okay, so the first step in our repair is going to be flipping the MacBook over and removing these six pentalobe screws along the bottom, two at the top, four at the bottom. Uh, the two at the top are gonna be longer than the bottom four. Now I'm gonna use a suction cup. Uh, you can also just use your hands, but I like using a suction cup to make it easier. Uh, to remove the bottom case just by pulling up. And once all of the clips are released, we're gonna push with, with our thumb on the top case away from us and pull the uh, bottom case towards ourselves. And that's gonna slide uh, these fingers on both sides off of the top case at the top here. Now we're gonna take uh, a plastic spludger in this step and disconnect the battery. Uh, to do that, we're first going to go ahead and unplug the battery management unit flex cable right here. And then we're going to take a T5 screwdriver and undo the pancake screw that holds the jumper running from the logic board to our battery board. And now the unit is safe to work on. And since we're replacing the LCD, we're pretty much only going to be working at the top here, of course, other than our battery. Uh, but yeah, so keeping that same T5, we're going to remove this screw, these screws here, so one, two, three, and four, uh, these hold the Wi-Fi vent module as well as our LCD board uh, to the top case. And then before I unscrew this T5 screw here, I'm gonna unplug our Wi-Fi antenna cables. And then I'm gonna take that T5 screwdriver and unfasten that screw that holds this bracket in place, again, holding the Wi-Fi vent module as well as our Wi-Fi antennas uh, to the logic board. And that's gonna be it for the T5 screwdriver in this step. Next, we're gonna go ahead and switch to a T3. There's a lot of T3s we're gonna remove. So I'm gonna start on the board actually with these two screws here. Uh, we're gonna remove the LCD proximity sensor uh, from the logic board here. So what this sensor does is it tells the unit when the LCD is closed, so it should go to sleep. When it's open, turn back on, uh, everything like that. This just tells it uh, where the LCD is in relation uh, to the top case. So we're gonna unplug this one here. In keeping with that same T3 screwdriver, we're now gonna go ahead and remove, uh, there's two screws, but four in total. Uh, the T3s that hold the LCD hinge covers to the top case. And of course, we're gonna remove the hinge covers themselves. And still with that same T3, there's gonna be four screws you remove here, 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 and here. Uh, these are, again, T3s, and they're pretty long. Uh, these hold what I call the bungees in our LCD assembly to the top case. Uh, just helps give it tension uh, when you're opening and closing it, and also helps it stay in position. It can be pretty difficult to get out even when they're fully loose. Sometimes I like to get lodged in there. Still with the T3, we're now gonna remove these four screws here for our LCD display connector. Uh, the top two, where the actual connector plugs into the LCD board are gonna be shorter than the bottom two here. Uh, these two and this retention bracket just secure the LCD display cable to the top case just to make sure it doesn't you know, kink or cut on anything like that. Um, just keeps it safe. Now we're gonna go ahead and grab a PL1 screwdriver and remove every single screw on the Wi-Fi vent module on both sides. And the final screws we're gonna go ahead and remove 
our six T8s, three at either hinge location. Now we're gonna take our plastic spudger and remove our Wi-Fi vent module. Unplug our LCD display connector. Again, just making sure our proxim proximity sensor is already unplugged, which it is. Now we're gonna go ahead and open the unit up and pull off our top case. So here's our bad LCD. We can set it aside and get our new one out and prepped for installation. Okay, so we're gonna set our old LCD aside and get our brand new one in here, which again, if you guys are looking for this, you can find it at our website, techdep.com or linked in the description below. I'm gonna go ahead and open up the hinges just to make it easier to slide our top case assembly back on here. So I'm gonna go ahead and lift up all of our cables, make sure they're all inside the top case. I'm just gonna act like I'm opening up the unit and the hinges will slide into their homes. I'm gonna hold them while I close the unit just to make sure I don't damage the top case. And close them all the way. Now in this step, uh, which is reinstalling the LCD, I'm gonna start with the six T8s that secure this to the top case. And again, if you guys are looking for any of the parts or tools you see in today's video, uh, we do have them available at techdep.com. Uh, both OEM and aftermarket, anything you're looking for, we've got it. If you guys are interested in having your MacBook or device repaired, we offer mail and repair. And of course, we service the local LA area. If you guys are interested in any sort of data recovery work or liquid damage repair, we also have trained specialists on site and will handle anything you need every day. So you wanna make sure these screws are tight. If they aren't, uh, the LCD will close on its own and won't stay open. The very first thing I'm gonna do is plug in our LCD proximity sensor, just to make sure I don't forget. And the next thing I'm gonna do is grab the four T3s we took out for our LCD bungees and reinstall these. Uh, you don't have to do this in this order. I just find it easiest to do it now while there's nothing in the way. Uh, Cause sometimes I don't like to line up. They do kind of snap or click into place, uh, which you'll feel when you get them aligned correctly. Very next thing I'm gonna do is actually reinstall my Wi-Fi vent module here. I do recommend the help of some tweezers uh, because this little cutout right here to the right of the heat pipe above this T5 we removed uh, is where all these cables are gonna feed in and you will have to assist them in coming through and then up uh, into where they need to go. So that, as you can see there, I have to help that one go up can't even find the second one. So we're gonna go ahead and just push these closer together. So when they come through, they come through all in the same order, direction, and in a bunch. Uh, this may take you a couple attempts if it's your first time, or even if you're like me, you've done this a million times, uh, sometimes they just don't like to cooperate. And we've got our third one down here. And then we have to assist our little bracket that goes above the logic board in as well. All right, and now I'm gonna go ahead and plug in our Wi-Fi antennas as well. And I'm gonna take the T5 that secures uh, the antennas and secure it in just while I'm in this area. And while I have the T5 in hand, I'm also gonna secure both the Wi-Fi vent module as well as our LCD board to the top case at the top here. I'm gonna go ahead and plug in our LCD display connector. And you can kind of go in any order, uh, besides of course the battery, the battery we're gonna do last, uh, but you can kind of go in any order from this point on. Uh, for me, I'm gonna start by securing uh, the LCD display connector at the top here. 
uh, again, these are gonna be T3 screws. So the two longest ones go at the bottom and the top are the two short ones. Now I'm gonna go over to the right side of the board and reinstall the bracket uh, that holds our touch bar connector as well as our uh, LCD proximity sensor in place on the logic board. Uh, this one does have a hook on the logic board side that you'll have to hook in before you can screw it in. There we go, just like that. And again, two T3 screws hold this little bracket in. Now I'm gonna take our PL1 screwdriver again and screw in the million and a half screws at the very top here for the Wi-Fi vent module. I like to do the edges first, but it doesn't really matter. Now I'm gonna go ahead and place our LCD hinge covers back in and then grabbing a T3 screwdriver once again, secure these guys. All right, so we're ready to go ahead and screw our T5 pancake screw back in, uh, connecting the jumper from the logic board to the battery daughter board, the positive and negative. Once that is done, we're gonna go ahead and plug in our battery management unit flex cable. This cable is responsible for telling the unit if it's charging, what charge it has, everything like that. Basically just tells the logic board what the battery is doing and how it's doing. If your unit does not turn on, uh, or if you tur it turns on and you unplug it and it turns off or is not charging, anything like that, check this cable, maybe reseed it, make sure uh, it is properly installed. Uh, that's your culprit there. Uh, but before I put the bottom case on, I'm gonna go ahead and grab a charger and make sure the unit turns on. We've got our charger here. Let's go ahead and plug it in. Give it a second to see a charge. Open it up and turn it on. So you can hear the unit clearly turned on. We've got a display. We're just gonna wait for the unit uh, to come up on the login screen to make sure that the LCD is working properly, which it is. And we're also gonna make sure that it is reading a battery charge. And when I unplug it, it stays on. And when I plug it back in, it's charging, which it is. So we're all set on here. We're gonna go ahead close it, make sure our LCD proximity sensor is working. In a second here, we should see the fans turn off or spin down, uh, meaning that the unit has the LCD proximity sensor working correctly and it is putting itself to sleep. While we're waiting for that, we're gonna go ahead and place this little cover for our battery board back on. And the screen is off and does open up or turn on when I open it, so I'm not, oh, there it is, finally went to sleep. So just took a second there, but it looks like our LCD proximity sensor's working. And of course, because I opened it back up, it just turned back on and then back off again. Uh, so last step here is reinstalling our bottom case. Uh, to do this, we're gonna line up the corner on one side first, being slightly off the edge. And as we do that, we're now gonna push down and slide it forward. So what that does is it, it engages the fingers here uh, onto the vent module just to make sure that it's fully secure. I'm gonna screw this side in with a pentalobe screw. Remember, these are the longest ones at the top before I move on to this side and securing it. There we are, so now that side is secure and I can screw it in. I'm gonna go ahead and push down and engage all the clips on the bottom case as well. Now we're gonna go ahead and screw in the bottom ones, which are all the same length. Uh, but that's gonna go ahead and wrap up today's video. Thank you guys for watching. Leave a like, comment, and subscribe. Again, if you guys are looking for any of the parts or tools you saw in today's video, or if you're interested in mail-in repair or any data recovery work, 
I will have it linked in the description below or check us out at techdep.com. We do it all every day. We hope to see you guys on the next episode.